That was a nice run on? on. Can you? Thank you. That was the most I've run in um, <laughs> 17 years. Some people don't realize the length between can the I? the door. Yeah, you can kind of wrap around. Okay. People don't realize the, the, how much length is there, and they take a slow walk. A lot there. of length. Yeah, I I saw that, and I thought that would be uncomfortable for everyone, probably. <laughs> um, can you hear me here with this that close? Okay, cool. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the monitors facing us, but I think they sound pretty good out there. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Ah, uh, there's some of you who came um, like 13,000 miles to see me today, which means more than I can actually express. What was the farthest? Who's anyone here in the room that's traveled far? South Africa. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just for him? I am not worthy. Everything, everything, everything. Thank you. <laughs> okay, no, no, cool, cool, cool. No, Ted, like, please, you know, I, I bow at the shrine of Ted Danson. So. <laughs> I, I like that, being lumped in a category with, with Ted Danson, that's got to be feel pretty good. First time that's ever happened. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a unique yeah. fandom, it's a unique crossover, magicians and I can only and hope, yeah. I can only wish upon a star, you know. <laughs> uh, any other far, far out p way people, yeah? Oh my God. <laughs> Indiana. Okay, All right. get up here, stand up, sorry. <laughs> I, we have to do this. You have to come up. <laughs> okay, we have. Okay, this is High King Elliot, <laughs> um, my very best friend in the whole world. Yeah, the most devoted, most loyal, most excellently dressed of all time. So thank you again for High being King here. High King Elliot, everybody, come on. <laughs> um, yeah. This has been like, this meetup has been like years in the making, so I just want to impress upon you guys how major this moment is for me. <laughs> um, so you could actually, if you wanted, you could just I mean, get whichever. A, if you want to be front row, or you want to just like yeah. pull up a chair, you could just be up here with me, whatever you want. I don't I, like so your you call. I got a chair. We've gone off the rails. This is what happens when we close down questions. We go off the rails, Hale. Close down what? No, okay. no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, hey. <laughs> we did Please, it. Please, no one else rushed the stage at any point, all right? That's all, that's all I asked. To be fair, it wasn't rushed. To be fair, it wasn't Use the no, microphone. you were invited, you were invited. Fair enough. <laughs> to be fair, it, it, I mean, it was rushed because it's, it's me. I moved as fast as I possibly could. But it, 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 was, it was very motivated. There was a lot of motivation there. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, think, I mean, how about the fandom here? How about, Come on, give it up for yourselves. Yeah. I gotta uh, ask. I mean, how amazing it's been, you know what I mean? Uh, we've, we've just got into the, the crux of, the, of these seasons and everything, and to have such an avid fan base, obviously there were books that came beforehand. But there were. Yes, um, yeah. and so that started it all. Yeah. Had you been a fan of the books before? Had you um, read them, or did you just kind of read them once you got them? Basically, the one of my best friends in the entire multiverse is Anthony Kerrigan. Hat was a huge fan. Um, he's also a great actor. He's on Barry. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. He's incredible on yeah. it. Um, but he said, I got an audition for The Magicians for Penny. And um, he said, that's my favorite book series. Here's the first book. Get into it. And I did. And I, and I uh, felt really shitty about my Penny audition. Oh. Um, and Carrie Audino, who's the casting director, is really honest and really wonderful and an incredible actress. She's like one of those people who... Um, you read with and, and she's really right there with you and she's present and um, Truthful which is a lot to ask for in, a, in an audition read and I and I just felt like it wasn't quite a match And I could tell she was sort of scratching her head going. What do I do with this guy? And then um, I, I got into the books further and I really fell in love with Elliot and um, I really, honestly, I, I, I crossed my fingers that I would get called back for him, and sure enough, I think three weeks later, she called me in, and, um, and I think the kind of, like, the rest was history. I met Sarah Gamble that day. She was in the room with me, and 
Um, I just really, really worked my ass off because I, I really wanted to play him um, badly. And uh, I knew that it was a great opportunity. And um, I also, I had been journaling three, like three months prior and I had moved out to LA and was like destitute and just smoking a joint with my friend on the porch and <laughs> writing in my journal and, <laughs> you know, wistfully looking off into the middle distance. And <laughs> I wrote a, a, a list of characteristics of a character that would inspire me at that moment in my life. And I, because I was really just auditioning for like CSI New Brunswick, you know, or like whatever. <laughs> We're and not that booking that it come. because yeah, yeah. I was like neither the rapist nor the hero and they were like we don't know what to do with you <laughs> and so I just I wrote a lot of adjectives that essentially described Elliot down in my journal I shit you not and there was also a ram double twin ram head planter sitting there I'm oh, not fucking whoa. with you whoa. and whoa and um, so that's kind of how I got the part <laughs> I imagined just, it. Did, <laughs> that's like the, uh, what's the secret? That's the secret, that's right? That's the secret. You do, you put it out there, you visualize it, and it comes true. I think Kinda. that's it. I mean, I'm, I do I'm believe in the law of attraction. I'm a little woo-woo. I'm not ashamed of it, and <laughs> that's who I am. So, there you go. <laughs> Before, you said you moved out to LA and um, had coming from New York. Um, I know you studied uh, both in high school at, at LaGuardia High School, which is a famous performing arts school, and then Carnegie. Oh boy, um, yeah. lots of training. Well, no, I mean, it's interesting to sort of, I'd love to hear about what your initial maybe ideas were about performing. Was it more centered around stage and theater being, you know, around from um, New York? And, and yeah, then totally. what made you yes, it decide was. to move? Yeah. Um, my mother is a modern dancer, performance artist, clown extraordinaire. And so I really grew up honestly watching her um, do, do her own thing in such a very unique way. And I thought everyone's mother was a, you know, modern dancer, performance artist, clown, and they're not. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But I thought it was just the most normal, beautiful thing for her to express herself in, in the way that she did. And so she was sort of, the, I suppose, the person who inspired me the most as a child. Um, and my family loves the theater, and so they would always take me to see Shakespeare plays and Broadway shows, and that was really the, the kind of planting of the seed for me. And then when I was about nine, I think I did my first summer theater program for kids, and um, that went well. And so, um, yeah, I think I got home from that, and the director of the, the festival you know, took my mother aside, and she said, you know, I think Hale's talented, and you know, you know, there's one thing that I would say, he, he keeps giving me direction. <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. <laughs> and so, I don't know if I was, but I was, I was pretty hooked this at that point. Is this the kids point. theater? The kids theater. Yeah. I was nine, I was really, um, I had a great time. Yeah, I think I played Christopher Columbus with like oh. a big floppy hat and like oh. glasses that were three times the size of my face, if you can imagine that. Went great. Um, yeah, that was the that was the earlier. Yeah, and then I went to all these other places and studied seriously and got into it and dropped out of college to do a movie and did that those things and struggled for years and did plays in New York that changed my life. Um, that's, yeah, that what ultimately? I'm um, being from New York, having lived there most of your life. What was what was sort of the impetus that ultimately like made you decide I'm going to take this chance? I'm going to go to LA and see what happens. Well, I guess LA was precipitated by m my kind of like moderate um, success in New York on stage right. and having done a couple plays that were truly life-changing. One was Streamers by David Rabe and the other was uh, Passion Play by Sarah Rule. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of um, solidified for me um, all the reasons why I do theater characters that were multifaceted and, and, and um, spoke to issues that feel close to my heart. And um, I... Then I then you know then it got hard and then I was in New York and I was in my mid twenties and I you know didn't have a pot to piss in and I was really freezing like my feet were cold literally and I was like <laughs> I gotta go to L A <laughs> um, and you know it was like New York theater is great and and you know but also sometimes um, 
it's hard to it's a hard game you know yeah, and yeah. and theater in new york sometimes bows to film and tv so honestly right. i thought well you know i'm losing to this this off broadway show to this you know soap factor maybe i need a tv show or something yeah yeah not yeah, yeah. that i wasn't already interested in film and tv i was but theater was sort of my my home and my first love so i thought in order to continue doing great theater roles i i would love to have a little more of an edge I, that was my like business brain side which usually doesn't know what it's doing but um that was truly yeah so then i, when I came out to la that's a good point you say about them <laughs> yeah you struggle you study uh you get the audition and then you lose it or not to a a film or tv actor no it's interesting. Shade. i love yeah. film and tv actors i'm a <laughs> film and tv actor exactly <laughs> Yeah. You should go back to New York. And yeah, I got to go back to New York and be able to remind them. <laughs> hey. <laughs> is there a difference between, I mean, there's definitely a difference between stage acting and, and uh, TV acting, but is there something that stands out to you as, as liking one over the other or um, um, just hmm. different? They're just different processes. Like, sure. you know, TV is incredible, is a fast meets the fastest medium. You know, yeah. you, sometimes we shoot 10 to 12 pages a day on, on our show, um, which is a lot. Um, on, a, on, a, on a movie, you might shoot two to five, five being a lot for a film. And on stage, you rehearse for a month before anyone sees you. Um, and you tell the story from start to finish. And on film and TV, you're mostly shooting out of order. You are probably meeting the person you're naked in bed with, like the day that you shoot that scene. <laughs> um, that's always great. And then you're really kind of um, leaving the door open for spontaneity to really uh, inspire you to deliver a performance that, yes, you've prepared, but that you're also kind of um, finding in the moment with whoever you're playing with on the day. And, and on stage, you're really honing and crafting a performance over a longer period of time. So it's just a different beast. Do you have any good meeting the person you're going to be naked in bed with stories for us here as the fans? Just stuck no. out. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I don't. <laughs> nope. Just a mild setup. Just a mild. Mum's the word. <laughs> um, I keep all I keep glancing during this entire thing is uh, the king sitting there too. I like he is just the kidding. king. <laughs> all hail the king. Um, <laughs> all that would be all hail the hail. Hey. That would be all hail the king. <laughs> um, yeah. No, no naked stories no, right no. now. I'm always naked and crying in most everything I'm in, so <laughs> we don't need to go there up here. Tell me a little bit about, though, um, going back to, you said, the descriptive words that you were using oh, in your yeah. journal <laughs> yeah. and how that kind of led into your yeah, character. Yeah. You know, how about that process, you know, because I know people are always interested in, you know, we're reading this character on yeah. the page mm -hmm. and we're kind of formulating an idea of your head in our heads right and then an actor comes in and i i think i would speak for everyone in saying you've done an excellent job of portraying the elliot that we all kind of pictured and i wonder yeah. well bless you very much <laughs> that was my number one uh terror nightmare fear dream that i would yeah. you know ruin the books with my performance but seems mostly not the case you know you can't please everyone. But how much of that, what, what, were the, what were those words, if you don't mind sharing, and sort of how did that then lead into the development of Elliot? The words the in my journal? Yeah, and sort of, <laughs> yeah, you mentioned it kind of connected um, to It was your... something like, I mean, I don't have it in front of me right <laughs> sure, now. Sure, sure. But um, I carry it with me everywhere I go. <laughs> um, I'm glad you have it in my phone. <laughs> yes, he actually has it. <laughs> Branded to his soul. Um, <laughs> no, I, so yeah, it was like, I want to play an adventurous, sexually fluid, witty dandy oh. who has royal blood and um, wears incredible costumes <laughs> and swashbuckles and becomes a hero of his own story. It was something like that. There, it was yeah. like a long list. It was like a page and a half, but those were kind of like things like that. And was there a lot of uh, changes, you know, when a new show is coming about, you know, how was that process of, of creating those characters, you know, with the writers in the room and everything, like up front, um, working with the other actors, anything that you changed or tweaked, or was it kind of just like on Changed or tweaked from the books, or th that we just, our process together Yeah, all your process, it. yeah. Um, you know, Sarah Gamble is very open to casting people she really believes in, and then really letting us kind of run wild with whatever it is that um, they concoct in the writing room so she kind of she kind of let me do my own 
thing with it. There wasn't sure. like a there wasn't um, like a like a clamp on my creative process in that way. It was very much we cast you for a reason. Like we do what we do in the writers' room, and you do what you do on set. It's kind of sort of yeah, yeah. you know she's very free that way, which is lovely for, uh, as an actor. Um, and unusual uh, on television, particularly, I think, because oftentimes there's a lot of, you know, producers on set kind of breathing down the neck of the production. No shade to producers, love, love them. But, you know, but, but there's sometimes there's, um, there's checks and balances in place which sometimes can thwart the creative process. Yeah. And, you know, I, the hardest thing on our show is just that it moves really fast and you have to. F figure shit out in like five minutes mm -hmm. and you, you sometimes get two takes and that's it and like good luck you know being excited about that performance but sometimes it you know I'm gonna stop talking now I think that was about the end no, yeah no, no, we're I just you know here. yeah yeah it's just you know it's it's it's, it's how fast and how believable can you be in like fantastical, unusual circumstances that most anybody would never have to play? Yeah. Like, you know, I think the other day, I think I did a scene with someone who was, um, who was a ghost, like, like hanging from a tree and, and like, it, like what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, it, you know, it was kind of like off the cuff, you know? Yeah. 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 So to kind of get into it. <laughs> like huge stakes, but then also like, you know, off the cuff dialogue, you know, oh, hey, how's it going? You know? You mentioned, uh, I mean, it's nice, like you said, to have that creative freedom up front because uh, oftentimes there's producers or, you know, people kind of breathing down your necks and the writers' necks and the creators. There were, and, and you mentioned some changes. Were there things that, that changed from the books that were uh, up front that you liked or didn't like or um, things that you le have learned as the past seasons have kind of gone um, that stick out to you as, as particularly memorable or... Well, I knew that the relationships were pretty well defined in the book by Love Grossman, who right. is a genius, who I do adore and love. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I really took his blueprint seriously when we were creating the show from the ground up and wanted to make sure that um, my connection to the actors playing, um, you know, Quentin and Margot particularly were were specifically drawn and inspired from um, Lev's descriptions in, in the novel. So I really did everything I could to um, mirror that and honor um, the, you know, source material. Was there a particular arc or scene or um, from any of the seasons that you feel like, um, and this, this kind of came up in our little discussion beforehand, particularly defines like Elliot as you see him um, completely embodied? Well, it's hard to say because he's changed so much over the over four years. For Look sure. at all these not like they are yeah, with yeah. me. They got it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would say, I don't know. Oh God, thinking back to <laughs> the beginning. Um, um, I, I just think that the. It, 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 hmm. <laughs> What defined him in season one? I don't know, I guess I just remember being kind of, I remember the moment that Summer and I were entwined on this weird kind of like daybed sofa thing and we were like <laughs> staring at Quentin and like lusting after him <laughs> casually <laughs> and thinking like that was a moment that sort of set up their, both their relationship and foreshadowed our relationship with Quentin as well. But, that, but that's more about relationship, I don't know. Also, I will say, um, just in terms of building from the ground up and creating the character, my, my biggest, you know, inspiration and ally outside of Lev Grossman's, you know, text was our costume designer, Magali Judaski, who's an absolute genius. She did, I don't know if you guys know the Luc Besson movie, Leon the Professional, but she did yeah. that. She did Armageddon. She's been around forever and she is my number one hero and, and inspiration on the show and, and, and literally every look that Elliot had in season one we were talking about specifically we mixed and matched vests and ties and whatever we thought but, but the conversation was open and it was about where Elliot is at emotionally and how what he's wearing actually reflects what's going on with him and, and how he wants to be perceived by the outside world cool. um, and sometimes how he's doing internally and that being an expression of that as well. So as the season progresses and he kind of falls into this downward drug spiral, um, you'll notice that the outfits kind of develop and change in tandem with that, which was intentional.
Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the production design as a whole, you know, on the show is 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 brilliant. And it must. Uh, how does it feel to kind of come in and you know have those creative artists surrounding you? Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the. <laughs> I remember walking into. I mean, you guys. To be honest with you, as a like kid lover of fantasy, I walking into the show and seeing the sets for the first time was a memory I'll never forget. Walking into the physical kids' cottage. Um, the boat, when they built the boat, I was like, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? I get a boat? Um, I got a flying boat. I get a kingdom, I get a boat. I get a like really cool call, like dorm, which is better than any dorm I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, who's got a mom jean chair in their dorm? I do. <laughs> so, you know, who's got a tree growing out of their boat? I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really, I really, um, I'm blown away by the production design overall, truly, and um, definitely inspires the kid in me that grew up loving this stuff to begin with. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing to then see, to see it just come, come to light, or come to fruition, you know what I mean? Is there... I mean, people jokingly always ask. You mentioned the outfits and everything, and, yeah. and and people. One of the sort of cliche questions is, "What have you taken one? Have you taken one home that you enjoy, or the outfit that you enjoy the most?" I have. Um, so, that you in the, at the end of season one, there, um, Elliot goes to Fillory and he wears this dynamite um, beige tan <laughs> like long coat. And I didn't keep it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I did keep the, there's kind of like an off pink kind of lavender vest that I wore. And I have one of those, and I have a pair of those pants, which are, I think, like Zara or something. But they fit really nicely, and they feel really soft, so I kept them. And, um, and then, uh, no, I don't. I didn't. There's like things that I'm like, you know, keeping note track of that I really. There's like, there's this like very open, beautiful velvet black gown robe that I wore in season three, um, and under it, there's the very, very bedazzled like um, red and gold um, schmuck. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> um, and I would very much like the black cloak because it's really incredible and it has like gold piping on oh. thin plate. It's like really exceptionally beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm doing this mostly for this the... This is so boring. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. no, no, There's, no. Um, They're into it. They're into oh, it. Oh, you guys are so cute! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Damn. I just want to hear you talk about whatever. Anyway, yeah, sure, we could talk about whatever. Well, I'd love to. You talked about the different um, ways that Elliot has changed. Um, nothing more dramatic and as drastic as the last season, I think. You know, as now turning completely, you know, being yeah. taken over by a different entity. Sure, sure. So not Elliot. Even season Elliot two is big for him. I mean, he for like sure. became a king, didn't know what to do with it, and then like finally rose to the occasion at the eleventh hour. So I think that's sort of like up there maybe. But um, but yes, being uh, inhabited by a monster, demon monster demons. baby child yeah. <laughs> uh, with, you know, close to no empathy or impulse control can change things <laughs> in one's mindset. How, uh, how enjoyable was that, uh, being able to kind of take that, that turn uh, as an actor to portray a villain? It was, it was, um, it was actually exciting because I, I felt like, not that I was, not that I'm ever on autopilot, because I'm always trying to figure out how to shake up scenes with Elliot, but there, are, there were ways in which I felt like taking a break from Elliot for a little while was healthy, because um, it allowed me to kind of flex other muscles as an actor, and the opportunity to play the monster was just, I thought, a great one. And, um, but but it was also very important to me that I humanize him in some way and make him misunderstood and not just a kind of villain for the sake of it. Like I knew that there needed to be kind of something that he was searching for and something broken internally in him or that he had been sort of um, left alone by the people, the very people that probably should have been taking care of him and that that was sort of at the core of um, his need to feel close to Quentin or close to one other person specifically. Did you guys ever see Let the Right One In? Do you know that movie? Um, I thought about that movie a little bit about how the monster kind of needed like one person to um, do his bidding and or take care of him, like be like a, be like a be like both a servant and a parent at the same time. 
well. um, that like need for closeness, but also that need to kind of um, delegate orders um, in like a very monstrous like like cereal eating way. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned, uh, would you say then that, uh, you touched on it briefly, that season two, um, that transition was not necessarily your favorite, but uh, what your most exciting um, arc for Elliot? Season two? Yeah. Honestly, actually, I would say I think season one was the most like clear arc for sure, Elliot sure. because he starts in a very specific place, which is at the height of this school in which he's the top dog and no one can fuck with him. And he knows, you know, every nook and every cranny and, you know, is just just right up there with Margot, and then by the end of it, he's really just falling apart and is ready to die. Yeah. So that's like a pretty significant uh, area to cover. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I speak for the fans when I say we love the musical episodes. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> oh, boy. I would just love to hear... Yeah. Well, it's sort of how that, like, where did it come from? Like, where, where was the sort of inception I of this have idea? no and then, idea. It yeah. came from John McNamara. He's, um, <laughs> he loves musicals. And I thought, actually, season one, the Taylor Swift musical was maybe the most, to me, the, the, the weirdest and, in a way, the funniest and, and, and most kind of ingenious thing because it was Quentin who is not a singer <laughs> who then is belting Taylor Swift in an effort to get inside the psychic head so that he could you know it's that you have to watch the show yeah. guys. I don't know it's like you know in order to an, to simultaneously annoy and get Penny to rescue him he annoys him but he he puts on a, like you know a impromptu shake it off in the mental institution. I mean, it's just like, what the fuck? So I thought, but I loved that. I loved that. And then I was, um, you know, the Les Mis thing happened way at the last 11th hour, you know, John McNamara. I said, I said, I love Princess Bride and I'm t still too shy to say hi to Carrie Elway, so I'll, I'm gonna have to oh. do that before this we, weekend is over. Yeah, we can um, get you a photo pass, I think. Oh, me. no, 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 I, no, 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 <laughs> Definitely not, no. Um, give it to him, though. But, um, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, if, if, I, if, if I can get, like, the courage and the two and a half hours makeup to come meet you. I'm cheering on this Carrie Ellis thing. It's got to happen. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe I will. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> um, but seriously, give him the photo op. Um, <laughs> Uh, where were we? We were talking about the segue, how this... Oh, the musicals, musicals right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, right, Les so, Les Mis, right. So, I said, <laughs> I really want a swashbuckle, like, you uh, know... Yeah, there we go. The Dread Pirate Roberts and Inigo Montoya at some point. Can you please make that happen for me on the show before it's over? Please, 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 please. And they were like, yeah! And then they wrote <laughs> that episode, and then... John said, oh, and by the way, you're, you're going to be singing one day more from Les Mis, like whilst swashbuckling. <laughs> so that was a lot for me because I wasn't prepared to do, you know, and I was like, can I, like, I did stage combat in high school and college, but can I, like, get a less, I got, like, three, I was, like, rolling over my, doing, like, forward, I'm not to brag, doing, like, forward rolls over my sword, you know, it's like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty easy, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but, um, but I did it, and uh, I had a great time doing it, and then the, the kind of the, the musical element was a last minute addition, so I was not, um, so yeah, I had to kind of make that happen very quickly. So you were, you were directing people at nine years old, and you're directing them still, you know, and they're directing listening, which is Am nice. I directing them? Well, no, I mean, you gave, a, you gave a direction, they listened, and they took it. Oh, I, they, yeah. They, they it, was a, it. it was a pretty please, like, mom yeah. and dad, yeah. can I, you know, it wasn't like a, this is, you know, yeah, man, no, no, I don't have that kind of power, no, no, no. <laughs> You mentioned um, the stage combat. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You but not getting too much of it, but doing it um, previously. Yeah. Like you know, what's all that about? And like, <laughs> have you gotten? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, like in high school, we just tumbled around on mats and you know, like pretended to kill each other. <laughs> it was fun. Um, you know, like the yeah. way you do. No, but it well, was like a, a it was a designated a course. I went to the performing arts high school, and you know, like it was you know it was fun. It was mostly fun and not that technical. And then in college, there's more technical things that 
happen with swords and blades and how to, you know, yeah. how to sword and dagger. And well, again, back to that stuff. sort of like being a fan of fantasy, it must have right. been fun to, you know, utilize some of the fun stuff you had learned, but then also get like this, you know, these professional stunt trainers. Yeah, you know, in yeah. There and so like, it was good. No, in Vancouver, I had, I had, I think, three or four lessons with um, Tom. Last name is eluding me, which is bad, but he's wonderful. Tom, if you're out there, I love you. <laughs> if you're watching this. Um, <laughs> Tom, are you in the audience? <laughs> yeah, Tom. <laughs> Tom. Tom. <laughs> yeah, Tom's not here. So I, <laughs> so he was good. And um, yeah, and my stunt double, Andrew Prest, was wonderful in sort of uh, helping me drill the, the kind of the um, the actions, the like, whatever. The, there were like two different separate fights, and so I, he was good in terms of helping me remember on the day. For you sure. Know, because sometimes, sometimes you know, you were shooting like six other things the last few days, and then you come in and you haven't, you know, you need a refresher course. Anyway. Yeah. Yep. No, for sure. You Do mentioned, it. I mean, the fast pace of, of TV and like, you know, uh, translating from book to, to uh, television and having to shoot really quickly and the trust and the confidence that you have to put in the other uh, actors and cast. I think yeah. that's like a, a testament to the <laughs> but show. But mostly you know? in yourself, if I'm being honest, yeah, because, yeah. you know, it's your time and you have a finite amount of it. And sometimes, you know, everyone's great on our show, but like on the day where, you know, so and so, you know, doesn't remember the speech or whatever. Like you, you can still know your shit and and come through, and that's that's useful. Is there a particular cast member or character that yeah. you feel like you have the closest bond to, and like get you know, it's Summer, just easy. Like shocker to everyone, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Summer, yeah, she's just. We have an alchemy together that I can't really explain. I mean, we didn't know each other before. Um, we realized pretty quickly that we could make each other laugh. Um, I admire the spontaneity and kind of, uh, I kind of see her as um, one of the most idios idiosyncratic people I've ever met in my entire life. No one can really turn a phrase like she does both in life and on the page in the script. Um, I don't think the writers n knew going into it that they had, like, kind of, Summer's the secret weapon of the entire show. I mean, sure. season one, she wasn't prominently featured, and I don't think anyone really knew. Yeah. And, um, and I knew because I was working with her and getting to know her and thinking this girl is gonna She's gonna be the star of the show in like yeah. five minutes and she to me. She 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 is no no shade to anyone on No, the, yeah for sure. myself, you know, but some it's <laughs> some, summer is my king, you know, that's how I see it <laughs> It's true. It's true. She's truly miraculous. Tell us a little bit about, um, again, you know, we're excited for the upcoming season. We're excited for all the, uh, the, the announcements that are coming up. We're not going to talk about them right now, but I'd love to hear sort of down the line, you know what I mean? Once like Magicians in, in inevitably like finishes this, their storyline and when we get our complete arc, which we hope, you know, we can continue to get over and over again until we've exhausted it. Yeah. You know, what's like, what's up for you next, you know, in terms, or not even right, right next, but just sort of thoughts ahead to the future um, of things you're interested in doing, characters you want to portray, getting back to the stage, really Boy, anything. All yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah, all of that. Um, I would love to get back to the stage. I'd love to do um, a, a great role on the stage. It's been a minute and a half. Um, I would love to. I have some music that I'm that I've been writing for like cool. longer than I've than I've been alive, really. And um, and so yeah. So that should be so probably on like the sooner side. Hopefully before this year is out, there should be a couple of treats out there for for Ooh. you guys and anyone who's interested. Um, What's what style? What genre of music? Oh God! Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, like elf rock? No. Um, uh, like um, like f like ambient like f folk folk pop? I don't know. It's yeah. not they're not like. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you play on a play an instrument on? Or I grew sing? up playing um, jazz piano, so Very like cool. jazz and the blues are, inspire a lot of the melodies that I write. Um, but uh, yeah. Are you planning on uh, just releasing it uh, digitally, or then kind of like taking it around and performing it as well, if you get um, the opportunity? Yeah, I'll, I'll do shows. I've done it's like sub, several live shows in Los Angeles, and I'll do more, and um, and I'll be. Hopeful. I don't know. I like don't know. I just yeah, you yeah, know, for sure. to me, this is sort of like you know, like music is a thing that that saved me when I was struggling to work as an actor, and and um, is a pure expression of of my creativity in a way that I actually haven't 
like done yet. So I'm I'm excited about that more for like selfishly like for myself for sure than than like to to like you know like take over the music industry. <laughs> like, I, I'm a realist, but um, but I also you know I I'm passionate about songwriting and and singing. Are there other um, interests, you know, things that you like to do on your downtime, you know, when not on set? You know, you, you mentioned writing music. Any other sort of uh, little things that you enjoy doing? Um, no, that's, that's it. That's it. No, um, <laughs> um, I like, you know, gazing into the sky. Yeah. And like, you know, like. Nice. It's nice. Like walk, long walks on the beach. Yeah, and, of course. Of what course. do you like? What do, what do I like? Oh my gosh. Um, I, in my free time, I actually write fan fiction, which please don't read that. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a great point. If you That's guys, a... if you guys are, want some, oh God, I shouldn't say this. Have you this. seen the artwork? There's, there's, there's beautiful the, artwork. Oh, there's like the most incredible artwork I've yeah, ever yeah, yeah. seen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, truly more time and effort went into like some of the, the fan art than, than, uh, than I don't know what. <laughs> um, then went into building the walls of these here convention halls. <laughs> um, Have you seen, was there any, has there been a particular art or like fanfic that you've like <laughs> noticed that has particularly stood out to you? No. All right, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> if y'all like some Elliot porn, you should check out um, at Z-E -E underscore -E. P-I-C-T. I think it's like NSFW, -E not yeah. safe for work. Underscore Don't bring it to your kids. Um, it's all it's all there. <laughs> um. How does it feel to come upon this? and discover it um, being just a... Uh, I'm fine with it. Like, I don't know. Like, Sarah's like, this makes me uncomfortable. I feel protective of you. And I'm like, nah, it's a drawing. <laughs> it's a drawing of a, of a dick inspired <laughs> by the character that Lev created, you know, <laughs> who happens to have my face. You know? <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, what am I going to do? Like, no, I, she's, he is incredible. Love you if you're listening out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anyway. What about just the, I mean, besides the sort of the kind of extremes, you know, even like um, you here today, you know what I mean? Just seeing your character envisioned by fans. Um, how does yeah. it feel as the so actor? Good. Yeah, that portrays them. So yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the most, the best, the most best, the best most, just all of that. Yeah. And, you know, you guys, um, when you come and you share with me, I don't know, the reasons why sure. the show is important to you or why Elliot is important to me, I hear it and I feel it. And, it, and it, um, it, it actually moves me tremendously. So thank you um, and thank you. Truly. Yeah. And let's all, yeah. we're out of time, but let's please thank um, Hale Appleman thank for joining us today. One more big round of applause. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can subscribe here to subscribe to the channel. There's more videos off to the left. And Mr. J says, don't forget to ring that bell button for more notifications.